Okay, so we're here today for CDRC on Tuesday, January 11th, 2022, um, to discuss the Airmont Fund Center, which is an Arredondack style fund center for a proposed concept plan at 166, 168, and 184 Route 59. And we have our building inspector on, uh, Lou Zumo, John Nozak uh, from Fusco Engineering for a village engineer, and Dan Crashar, our deputy village attorney. Um, and we have, I see Jim Cheeseman and Mr. Edwards, you are? John Edwards, 407 uh, North Highland Road, Upper Nyack for uh, the applicant, Jim Cheeseman. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, if the applicant would like to um, begin and discuss it, that's please go ahead. Jim, you just want to explain what you're doing. Um, I provided a narrative that, that basically um, describes what we want to do with the, the property. Um, we just feel it's a, a needed use for the community. And um, I mean, the narrative is pretty self-explanatory. We just want to have your input as to what you think of the concept plan. So um, any comments? Wait a second. Yeah, we're the seventh most boring place in New York State. <laughs> seventh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that the highest we've ever been or lowest we've ever been? Uh, <laughs> is this just this year how long have we been that boring i think the important point to understand is that you can be better <laughs> mm -hmm. could you folks just i didn't even know that they uh judge that could you folks hold boring. on one second somehow i lost you okay uh, trying to figure out how i go back i can hear you it's the video i've lost and it says launch meeting. So I'm going to try that again. Okay. Jim, I don't know if you saw, yeah. I forwarded you the village planner and the village engineer memo, but I don't know if you saw it before. Yeah, I, I got that. Thank oh, you. You're welcome. And now I will make sure in the, in the future, I send it to Mr. Edwards as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I'll send it to you after the meeting for your records. Okay. So, so other than the uh, uh, the boring comment that we have, <laughs> are there uh, other things about which we should be aware for purposes of uh, you know uh, revising a plan? Well, let me let me ask a question of Lou because uh, I honestly didn't look it up myself. Um, is this a permitted use in the zone? Yeah, a recreational center, outdoor recreational facility is a permitted use. Okay. Some of the things that are components of that outdoor recreational center are, I don't know if it, if it works that if they're in the, I mean, because we have a, basically a bar and we have a food, food service in there and we have possibly horses which are not permitted uses in that area. So was that brought up anywhere? Oh, well, no, we're at the meeting now to discuss that, I think, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, but does, uh, didn't he apply? And didn't you comment on? There's no application yet. This is a preliminary proposed thing. Okay. Yeah, and he, he came and spoke with Lou and I about what some of the items that would be required to submit. And he wanted to go with a concept plan. We did mention that we need a bulk table and things of that sort, right. but he wanted to get the input of the committee uh, before they went further. So I don't know if you want to um, start with the planning memo. Yeah, that talk should, yeah. The planning comments that talk about the bulk requirements, John, I don't know if you're covering that or not, um, or I could just read the letter into the record if that's better. 
Um, well, and then we have also engineering comments. Well, uh, yeah, let me let me just state that uh, uh, the well, I'll go to the engineering comments first. So we do have a concept plan, and of course, I know in the review that you know it's a kind of a it's a it's a pretty looking nice uh, rendering of you know what the applicant wants to do, but uh, for the purposes of engineering. Um, it doesn't really have a whole lot for us to review. There is no drainage, there is no grading, there's no utilities. Uh, you know, a full site plan is what ultimately we're going to need to to review and and be able to do a, a, a technical review uh, with all the engineering de details. There's going to be a stormwater pollution prevention plan required. Uh, it's more than one acre of site disturbance. Um, there is a, a concerns with um, the buffer. Uh, the DEC buffer and possibly a DEC buffer permit that's going to be required. Uh, water and sewer utilities, uh, all those kinds of things. Uh, so I, I think the, the 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 rendering is is a, is a very good picture of what they want to do. But from terms of engineering, there's really not a whole lot for us to review at this time. Uh, so that being said. Um, I, I did note in the planner comment section of the review that this is a permitted use. Uh, outdoor recreation facilities, um, understanding, of course, that there are some components which may not be permitted. And I'm not really sure of the answer to that yet. So we're going to have to look into that further to find out what components of this application may not be a permitted use. Um, and there are some setback requirements too, which I think a front yard 75 foot yard, side yards are 50. And um, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. I just want to make sure. Uh, that may require a variance. I know the application says there's no variances required, but as we get into more engineering detailed plans, we'll be able to determine that. Uh, common three, I'm just noting that we're definitely gonna need a long form EAF. Uh, and there are going to be, uh, I, I'm sure, some environmental concerns, uh, traffic concerns, stormwater pollution prevention plan. Uh, I'm assuming that, um, you know, go-karts are great, but when in somebody's backyard, they're not so great. So there's going to be concerns with regards to noise concerns and buffer landscaping, lighting, visual impacts, things of that nature. Uh, as we get in more detailed engineering plans, we can probably comment on that further. Uh, but there's definitely going to be some impacts that I think are going to have to be addressed as we go through the process. Is this uh, um, proposed to be right next to um the potentially uh um, gas station rebuilt gas station yes it is yes because there were issues with that application which may have bearing on this application um Uh, I'm doing this from memory, uh, but uh, the other property doesn't have parking. Uh, I think there are some issues with um, getting uh, the uh, gas deliveries. Um, Thank you. I'm sorry. Circulation. She, she handed this to me and had to go get to had to go to the post office because she has a meeting later. Yeah, you know, what do they have to do with this? Uh, th that well, application just, hasn't been approved, has it? No, but like you, they're seeking approvals, um, and um, you're talking about. Uh, a gas station on a very tight site next to uh, a fun center with little kids. So there's that's something that's got to be looked at. No conclusions are being made, but uh, if you have an unsafe condition at a gas station right next door, to a fun center with little kids, obviously you wanna make sure that it's a safe situation for the kids. Well, Dan, we're prepared to 
we're prepared to undertake whatever safety requirements may be required as a result of an adjacent property. But you know, you and I both know that the shortcomings of that uh, site uh, are could be resolved. They to make that site more workable or even workable um, for the use that is intended would require an easement or a purchase of property from my client. Now they were in negotiations. Those negotiations uh, you know, fail to uh, result in any transfer of rights. So the shortcoming is uh, that of the gas station. Whether the gas station can operate safely given the limitations of its site is not my client's concern. It's the gas station's concern. And I'm not sure the gas station should be operating. Yeah, but let me ask you this, John. Yeah. Gas station already applied. They're ahead of you. Yeah. Okay. So, so that um, right now, this hasn't been before, your application hasn't been before the planning board. So if they get their application before the planning board, they have every right to develop their property. Um, it can't be looked at uh in a vacuum if your application is ultimately going to be on the planning board agenda uh along with the gas station they're going to have to be looked at uh together um and if they beat you um to an approval, but it has a negative impact on the workability of your site, that could be a problem. So my response would be you know, twofold. Number one, I don't think that the sequence of the applications dictates the individual applicant's property rights. If the gas station chooses to prosecute its application first, based on the limitations of its site, then that's what's before the planning board. Maybe it's capable of being approved, maybe it's capable of being approved with conditions, but those cannot be conditions that burden my client's adjacent property. No, but if the functionality of that site creates hazardous conditions for your client's site, how do you propose to handle that? We'll handle that. If that site is approved based on the limitations, I mean, uh, I haven't looked at that application. I've looked at the site my recollection is that the problems are by and large to the north of that site, which is my client's property, to some extent to the rear, because there may be parking or other issues that the gas station requires or desires to the rear that impact my client's site. But I'm thinking that um, the Gas deliveries, um, do they have to back up when the truck comes in? I don't know. Yeah, it's through. bad. It is bad. bad. But, you know, it could, it, it was capable of being corrected. They actually had an agreement. The agreement didn't, uh, didn't go forward. So it left them with their, with their site. Now I'll say this much. Um, if we're going to talk about the sequence of applications and we have to take into consideration uh, the adjacent use so as not to segment any applications on the seeker, 
Correct. then so too does the, uh, the gas station and the planning board in the context of the gas station application. I agree, but and again, I, I, I started out by have... saying right now, they're before the board, you're not. Understood. You don't have an application. Understood. They're, they're... So. <clears throat> I understand that. And, but Dan, what I'm saying is the board, um, can only impose conditions of approval on the gas station within the limitations of the gas station site. The planning board could say, you know, we don't know what's going on next door. Although now what they would say is we have an idea of what's going on next door, but there's no application before it. Nothing's been approved. Um, but whatever they do whatever the uh, you know delivery limitations, the size of the truck, the nature of the operation there have to be made safe within the limits of the site, its site. Our application when it's filed can't be held hostage to that application in the sense that we have to accommodate on our property the use on the adjacent property. I mean, it's they've got a substandard uh, lot and uh, a use that, you know, I don't know. Which for many years, but John, for many years, yeah. it, it did function as a gas station. Yeah, but Dan, how? It functioned mean, because legally? they were trespassing on my <laughs> client's property. My client shut off that access. That created, and properly so, for a variety of reasons, not the least of which my client wasn't about to, uh, you know, allow the environmental concerns inherent in a gas station, particularly in that gas station, the way it was being operated, moving dirt, uh, which was contaminated or may have been contaminated onto its adjacent site. So my client shut it off. So it functioned by trespassing on my client's property. It can no longer do that. So I'm not sure that the history of the operation of the gas station is going to uh, allow the planning board uh, you know, to, to approve it. And certainly you can't approve it in the same manner as it operated. John, so again, just, I, we're just, willing to just take to be it. Clear, just yeah. to be clear, yeah. we, we, we should all be on the same page on this. Yep. The issue is safety. Um, and uh, most importantly, the safety of the kids that would be using this uh, recreation center. Yeah, um, I'd like to... Say how much it is. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. So, I mean, we're, um, we don't know uh, as we speak right now whether they can be overcome, what it would take for um, uh, any issues that arise uh, to be dealt with. Um, we don't um, know, you know, uh, what responses we're going to get from. Don't forget, uh, DOTs involved here. Um, we got Tolman Fire Department. Um, you um, uh, have potential DEC issues. Um, Soil issues, as the engineer brought up, uh, drainage issues. Um, you know, I I can't predict everything, but I'm just looking at it. Gas station next to a, a gas station with horrible <laughs> um, turning radiuses, uh, radii. Um, and um, 
functionality issues next to a place that's going to have lots of little kids running around. So we, uh, we understand that and we understand uh, the engineer's comments and the uh, no engineer is in a position at this point based upon you know, the informal submission to comment on what are uh, fairly routine issues that confront any large uh, development. I mean, we, we understand that you, the engineer needs drainage, topography, utilities, um, and uh, other issues that might present themselves by the uh, long EAF. There are certain things we know, um, and we'll, we'll deal with those issues. I mean, what we know is in response to the comment of uh, a development that will involve hopefully a lot of little kids and a lot of big kids, a lot of big kids who were playing little kids games because it's the nature of all of the activities that are proposed. What we know is that there's more than a hundred feet from the parking area, which is the southernmost aspect of development on my proper on my client's property, in excess of a hundred feet to the boundary line of the gas station, um, and all the way up from Route 59 to uh, the back of my client's property, which is far beyond uh, the limits of the, the ultimate proposed development, there is a 100-foot uh, wetland buffer. Uh, so that 100-foot separation uh, exists all the way back with the possible existence at the rear of my client's uh, development but far to the rear of the adjacent gas station property, the proposed horse corral. And by the way, that was actually something that was suggested by the uh, DEC inspector who suggested that the wetlands could be used for an agricultural use, which would include pony rides. Not necessarily committed to that, but that's where the, uh, that's the origin of that proposed uh, use. Um, because it's within uh, boundaries of the wetland buffer. But we'll address um, all of the issues required to be addressed, environmental and engineering, on our property. It's a reasonable uh, request, <laughs> a reasonable demand uh, on the part do you of know, the village. Do you know if there's any um, um, school or um, religious institution within 500 feet of this? I don't know, I don't believe so. Um, I mean, I would say to the east, no, what's behind you? Well, you, you know why I'm bringing that oh, up, no. John. You know why I'm bringing that up? No. Okay. You're proposing a beer and wine garden. Yeah. And part of the requirements to get a liquor license or beer license is that you be uh, uh, at least 500 feet away from any school and or religious institution. I, I don't I don't know, Dan, that that is, is true. I know it has to be disclosed on a liquor license application. I don't know, you may be right, that it is a prohibition. No, uh, it's definitely, you're, you're correct. If I came across as uh, 
saying it's a, a no go. No, that's not my intention. Um, <clears throat> but process wise, mm -hmm. you have to disclose it. Um, I think it requires it to go, I mean, more often than not, not always, but more often than not, it's uh, um, a request of, in this case, the village board for um, a waiver of a public hearing uh, and uh, an approval or setting of a public hearing <clears throat> um, with regard to uh, the liquor license. Well, I think the waiver issue is a 30 day waiver that can be that the village board uh, can reduce or eliminate upon notice. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but okay. we, under, we understand. Um, but yeah, we'll take a look. We'll take a look at the dimensional issue and the, uh, and the requirements, the SLA requirements and whatever discretion it gives to the, to the village board. Yeah, and we should tr probably try to narrow down uh, what uses are allowed and what might be problems. Rump? The guy doesn't drink. <laughs> I'm not talking about the drinking part. Okay. But... We'll take a look at that. But again, getting there's back always... to your... There's always, I mean, full disclosure, if you don't agree with the building inspector's determination with regard to <clears throat> some of the uses, you know what you can do. Yep. So, um, so I guess for purposes of, of process, when you say if we don't agree with the building inspector, um, I mean, we haven't made application for a building permit. Mm -hmm. Because it's well, at the moment. Make, was you, that, you, haven't, you haven't even applied for site plan. I understand. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, if we thought we needed variances, even though we haven't applied because use would be, approval would be subject to site plan. But if we needed variances, I think technically we would have to apply for a building permit. It would be denied and he would have to tell us why and we'd have to go to the zoning board. We're not looking at this point in time at variances. So it's strictly an application to the planning board. I don't know when you say- Well, I heard, I heard, uh, the village's engineer mentioned that you might need variances. Correct. I know, and we know what he's talking about. I think he's okay. looking at the, I think he's looking at the uh, front setback. Right. But at the same time, even if you needed variances, if there were certain uses that you disagreed with the building inspector on where he takes the position that, uh, um, it's not allowed under the code, you have, you can argue in the alternative before the zoning board um, that you respectfully disagree with the building inspector and here's why. Well, we could argue that to the planning board as well, I think, because I think under your code, the planning board can adjust those. Not use, I don't think uses. Use is different. Yeah. No, the, uh, but the setback. I guess here's my point, and not to beat around the bush, is um, I guess when I when I when I raised the building permit as sort of the the vehicle, um, you know, we ride to one board or to the other. How does the building inspector and maybe the building inspector can tell us in this context? where the preliminary, if not the only, ultimately the only application is to the planning board. 
how do we get the uh, building inspectors comments, I guess formally, so that we act on those comments? Or does he simply make comments to the planning board after the application is filed and then the planning board makes some determination upholding his comments or asking us to respond to his comments or whatever. But I mean, right now my client has met informally with the building inspector. They've had a very you know, you know, cordial uh, discussions. Uh, how do we, Tell me, tell me the process if it's going to be the building inspector's decision in the first instance that is going to guide the planning board and the village general. Where do we go from here? <laughs> Dan? Uh, Lou, I, that, that's a, a definite Lou question. <laughs> okay. He asked the process um, with regard to applying. Um, how, how does he find out whether he needs variances? Um, what triggers um, his ability, if he does need variances, to apply to the zoning board. Um, um, does he fill out a building permit application and they could then get denied because uh, he needs a conditional use permit, he needs site plan approval, he needs uh, variances for um, A, B, and C. Um, uh, three out of the, I'm throwing out a number, 14 uses uh, uh, for the site that he's proposing um, don't meet uh, code requirements for the following reasons. Uh, pursuant to section 254A of the uh, uh, the code of the village of Aramont, um, you're not allowed to have beer gardens. I mean, I'm just throwing out examples. Um, what, Lou, what, do, wh where does he go? How does he, um, what's the process? Normally those things would be triggered by a building permit. You're absolutely right. So the variances and everything else, but based on the preliminary stuff we have here, um, there might be a variance for a side yard clearance. There might be a variance for front lot, lot for front setback. Those those things, but but these this drawing is has a lot of deficiencies for distance, measurements, area. There's a lot of things missing on here. I mean, it's a beautiful okay, so, concept, yeah. man, but so the plan the plan has to be cleaned up to the point where. The engineer can make better determinations on engineering requirements. You uh, can make better determinations with regard to um, use as well as uh, potential bulk requirements. Um, he would then uh, apply for a building permit with those um, um, better developed plans. Um, you would go through the plans. You would point out um, you need uh, site plan approval. You need a special permit. Uh, you need the following variances, et cetera, et cetera. Is that the way you see this going? That's the way we normally work, isn't it? Yeah, and we also have comments from the village planner as well. Right. That provide all this information too. Right. Once we have better developed plans. So the first step, I think, is the better developed plans. No? So let me suggest something because I mean, this can't be, I wouldn't think, you know, the, the first time a 
Um, I'm not saying we're necessarily conforming. We hope we are, but uh, it's not the first time you've encountered an application for a commercial development uh, with a conforming uh, plan. I, I mean- No, it's the seventh I, time. Okay, so you have- Seven. A, we have a, yeah, we're yeah. the seventh most boring place, and this is the seventh application that we've had. This week. So maybe it's time <laughs> to grant one that elevate. Uh, no, but Lou, I, I mean, I, I was using the building uh, permit application just sort of as an illustrative means by which you turn it down and goes to the zoning board. When someone needs a site plan uh, approval, the application generally goes straight to the planning board. You comment in the planning process, I would think, not it goes to you to be turned down. The planning board's not the appellate body. No. Because we're not going to submit a, a building permit application with building plans. Um, there's any number of reasons why you would turn down an application for a building permit if it's simply, you know, to trigger you sending it to a different board, you know, for planning and zoning reasons, as opposed to building reasons. I mean, we could make that, I think, what is a formality of an, ap an application, mm -hmm. but we know that we have to go to the planning board. We know that your code, I know that your code tells me, maybe there's a history where you you Dan say that's not the case, where the planning board can adjust uh, the setback and yard requirements. So they do not necessarily, the application does not necessarily need to go to the zoning board, even uh, if there are a lot in bulk uh, deficiencies. Um, we just need to know, I guess, should we do what would typically be required in order to submit a complete application to the planning board? Or are there concerns by the village professionals um, that over certain aspects or components that maybe we ought to talk through more in a setting like this with the benefit of some more detail. I mean, I don't wanna to run to the planning board um, if there are specific concerns that could be raised and addressed and maybe um, we modify the plans, you know, by removing or doing something else because we see them as legitimate concerns on uh, your part that uh, the planning board, even if they could address, maybe, you know, we would like to modify the plan, but where should we, where should we go uh, from here? Should we file a formal application or should we come back to you folks, um, you know, based on more detail? Or you can say, it's up to you. <laughs> I guess we'll have to decide. But yeah, I, I hear, you know, Dan, I hear some use issues on your part, or maybe on Lou's part, uh, maybe, uh, you know, some uh, on the engineer's part, maybe some side yard, or I mean, side setback and front setback, which may be accurate, may not, depending upon the actual dimensions. Um, should we do a little bit more work and come back to you or should we go straight to the planning board and then have the planning board, have your the village professionals respond to the planning board and we make adjustments as we go through that process? Whatever's best for you. How are you doing? Sounds like a Dan question. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, 
I think I already answered it, at, at least my opinion. If the you said it's a good question. Be, um, the plans have to be better developed to address the engineering. We haven't heard anything from planning because there could be planning issues as well. Um, Is the planner on, by the way? Suzanne? I see a um, um, I, I don't know that Al will be on for today. I don't know, John, I don't know if you're filling in or you're just doing the engineering part for, for Al Fusco. Well, I, I guess we recently found out that we're doing the planning as well as the engineering. So I don't think we have at this point enough information to really give a reasonable planning review. Uh, so, um, but I, I do, the, the plans that you're looking at um, for our practical purposes are, it's, you know, it's just kind of a pretty sketch. Um, Understood. We, we, we need, and it does give an idea of what you want to do there, which is what its purpose is. Uh, but moving forward, at least from uh, our perspective, is a, a plan that is prepared by an engineer, signed and stamped by an engineer that shows setbacks that shows all the proposed uses that shows draining, draining, so for bulk table and everything that that professional would know exactly what needs to be on the plan so that we can do a thorough review and maybe tell you what variances we think you need uh whether they're their area variances or whether they're use variances but there's no way we can do that based on that sketch we have here now no i understand i understand that and you know so my question was simply do we you know, do we do that in the context of an application to the planning board, a formal application to the planning board, or would it be in the best interest of the applicant and the village if we uh, did that, at least with considerably more detail, understanding what you need, uh, well, and then came the back here we, first? Or John, do we come John. back here? Yeah. John, the way we usually do it yep. is first off, think about what this committee's role is. It's to review the technical aspects of an application. Understood. Um, by it's by the village's professionals. Um as a result of that, um, memos are prepared, um, uh, discussions are had with uh, um, the board and the applicant. Um, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you change this? Um, and we try to work out the technical aspects of an application before it's formally submitted to a planning board because otherwise it turns into like a combination CDRC planning board meeting um, where we're um, going over all the technical issues with the planning board. Um, that's not usually the way we do it. We try to resolve um, at least as far as the um, engineering, planning, legal, building uh, issues um, uh, that may be involved um, beforehand so that we can all go to the planning board and say, okay, you know, um, this is where they began this is where they are now. They've addressed uh, our following concerns with regard to these issues. Um, but um, uh, we're leaving it up to the planning board to determine, you know, things like. Um, um, lighting, um, architecture, um, uh, et cetera. Um, so 
the way we usually do it is you got to make um, a lot of progress um, in terms of the technical aspects of the application um, so that we don't spend four or five meetings um, at the planning board dealing with stuff that um, we deal with, you know, from tech technical standpoint um, by this committee. Um, it, the intention is to streamline the process, not to delay the process. And my experience has been if uh, for those municipalities that have represented that either don't have a TAC or a CDRC and just rely on the planning and zoning boards um, that um, it tends to slow down the process because you're, uh, I mean, think about all that we've discussed this morning. We'd be doing it at night. Uh, we'd be doing it with the public. Um, at some point, public hearing. Um, and if we don't address these issues early on in the process, that public hearing becomes, oh, we didn't think about that. Oh, um, you got to take care of that. Uh, okay, you got to come back uh, uh, for the next meeting or, oh, you don't have enough time to come back for the next meeting. Um, because um, uh, you have to submit it within X number of days before the next meeting. Um, or we don't have a GML uh, and the county, as you know, has 30 days from when they receive it um, to um, complete their GML review. Um, you got DOT, DOT takes forever. You got, um, DEC, um, there are a lot of permitting uh, and approving uh, agencies that are going to be involved in this project. So the more we deal with up front before you go to the planning board, my experience, um, the smoother the planning board processes. And I also think um, quicker. Just my opinion. Okay. So to recap, I think it's best that you redefine the plans and make them um, more engineer-like and, and planner-friendly so that they can make their determinations and the building inspector on what's gonna be required for going forward. Okay. I think that's the next step. Signed, sealed, certified plans as best as you can, even if they're preliminary, correct, John? Yes, I mean, okay. you don't have to go, you know, with uh, slopes and pipe inverts and catch basin grades and a full stormwater pollution prevention plan, all the things that will be required as we get further into the process, but at least a fairly detailed concept plan, preliminary plan prepared by a professional that will allow us to make the basic determination of what variances you may need, what uses are permitted, not permitted, side yard setbacks, things like that. <clears throat> yeah. Which includes so I'll give the you an, table. John, I'll give you an example. Uh, in the narrative, it says that the site, all the lots combined, I guess, uh, are approximately 12 acres, of which you're only gonna be using 4.1 acres. But nothing is said here as to what's gonna to happen to the rest of the land, how it's gonna be utilized. That some thought ought to be given to that. Um, definitely has to be addressed. Okay. Yes. No. Yes. Wetlands can't be flooded. So, yes. 
And then we need the long EAF that will help as well. I'm just looking at John's letter. And some of the things in, in, in the engineering letter need to be um, included. Hours of operation in the narrative, the bulk requirements, et cetera. The hours of operation are listed in there from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Okay. I didn't notice. Um, is there a company that's going to be running this that does it elsewhere that if, let's say, uh, planning board members uh, or any of the professionals wanted to visit another one of their sites to go visit? We could give you illustrative sites for illustrative uses, but um, the operator will be uh, my client's company. Have you ever done this before? No. I've played mini golf. <laughs> yes, I am quite confident <clears throat> you're very good at it. Um, all right, Suzanne, yes. try do what you can to get planning comments to them too, for all of us. What do you mean? from the planner. Okay, I sent them this morning the, what I received thus far. I'm not, all, all, all I'm saying okay. is that's another thing that we're all gonna have to look at. No, I know. Things are gonna be doable and this distance is doable. Are they okay with the golf being up here? You know, I just wanna know before we go to a a more detailed engineering review is this another yeah. recommendation i would make john yeah is meet with is this tallman fire department it's got to yes. be right yes yes um lou do you um do you think it would be a good idea for them to meet up front um with tallman to show them well uh <laughs> What? Go ahead. Tolman also commented plans. they need better plans. All right. Tolman said the same thing. They need better plans. They they can't comment on what was provided to them. Okay. There's, okay. Only, there's only one large building on the site, and there's two smaller buildings. Um, I mean, they're not going to be putting out fires in the bumper boats or the golf course. So they have access to and from the parking lot. I don't know if that's an issue, but they wanted better sites for turnaround and accessibility. Understood. Yeah, and I did give um, the applicant the turning radius, and he did include that in his plan. I did that up front. So they have that, and the fire department is aware of that. All right. Any issues with uh, water and sewer or any other utilities? Access, capacity. Has anyone studied that? No, because there's no, there's no specifications that we've seen on it. I mean, we're going to have electric go-karts. We're going to have electric bumper boats. We're going to have a lot of, it's going to need a lot of electric and charging capabilities. So I don't right. know if there's going to be a transformer on site, if they're going to bump up the electric, what kind of feed they're bringing in. None of exactly. that is Exactly. That's yeah, why I mentioned yeah, it. Stormwater level, uh, this, this is you know, going to require a full stormwater pollution prevention plan, DEC compliance. Uh, and, you know, it's going to require stormwater detention. It's going to require uh, green infrastructure design, water quality. Uh, there's a lot of components of the full stormwater pollution prevention plan that will need to be required to meet DEC requirements. So this, this site will require full compliance. There are other sites when it's not as, as intensive a use, or different types of uses where you don't need to do a full stormwater pollution prevention plan, but this is one that will definitely need that. So, uh, yeah, and and I whether or not 
whether they can use the balance of uh, the 12 acres for any or all of those uses is something that's got to be looked into as well. Well, the, 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 the plan that I saw, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, that remaining portion of land is, I could be wrong, is, is actual DEC wetland and or buffer. So if I'm not mistaken, there's no, no use that could be proposed on there that would be permitted other than maybe if they wanted to construct a stormwater, a, 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 a pond of some sort maybe. Is that true or not true? That's what we believe. Okay. It's true. So of the 12 acres, eight are essentially DEC wetland. Right, which could prove challenging um, to deal with the original issue that you brought up in terms of um, uh, mitigation of uh, um, drainage and stormwater. Well, the other problem is that about half of the of the proposed site is is impervious surface area. That's a lot of water to capture and put someplace else. Between the parking it, lot, the track, the building, and the paved areas around the building, it's about half impervious surface. It may actually even be more like sixty five percent if you. Yeah, well, so that's a lot of water to put somewhere. How good your engineer? We're going to be using Paul Gardansky, so he's familiar with the site, familiar with okay. what he's looked at the preliminary plan um, and feels that he can do some, uh, mitigate the water underneath the parking lot area. Okay. And the mini golf is contained in its, in its own area. The, the drainage system is contained into the ponds and the, and the water pools in that area, so that's contained in that area. So it, it, it does reduce it substantially as to uh, areas that need to be for drainage. All right, Suzanne, timing. Um. John, listen to this. John and Jim, I don't know. Uh, if you the, the the deadline to come to the February meeting would be January 20th. I don't think that you could make that possibly you could, I don't know. If not February 17th for a March 8th meeting. The March 8th meeting of this group. For CDRC, yes. CDRC. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yes, CDRC meets on Tuesdays once a month at eleven o'clock, unless okay. otherwise indicated. Sometimes there's changes. Yep. Okay, very good. Okay. We thank you all for your time. Do you guys have any additional questions? Or we're on the same page? You know what, I wouldn't mind because I don't think, frankly, that it requires detailed engineering, but I'm hearing questions on uses. And that, ultimately implicates everything uh, we're doing. So if you, amongst yourselves, or and I'm not suggesting- Well, right you now, know how it works. The judgment um, or determination on something like that is made by the building inspector. So, uh, yeah, and maybe to further add a little uh, uh, insight, um, you can't just make an application to the building inspector because you know this requires site plan approval by the planning board ultimately. So I think you really have to make some sort of an application. Do I need full-blown engineering drawings? Uh, I don't think so. I know what you're saying. Uh, you don't want to spend lots of money on detailed engineering plans only to find out you need variances that you may never get. To submit yeah, a site plan yeah. with enough detail that we can make a determination to review it in enough detail to determine what variances you may need. And then from there, I, I would assume you would go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. <clears throat> John, how much more detail do you want? Because there are some measurements. I don't know if you saw that on the side for the, for the setback of the building. There's a side setback. There's a front setback. 
There are I mean, measurements on here, but I don't know how detailed you want us to go into this, but I would it, like it, 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 it has to be a plan Absolutely. that an engineer is, is comfortable putting his stamp and signature on. So, uh, I mean, you're just drawing a sketch. I don't know if the sketches are based on actual dimensions, AutoCAD dimensions. Uh, I would say you're gonna need uh, existing topography, a conceptual layout of everything. I mean, uh, I don't think you need full uh, grading plans. Um, I, I do need, you need to show everything that you're proposing conceptually on an engineering plan to scale, signed and stamped by an engineer. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, and I think you also need to make a, a formal application. This is what we want to do. We want to do a fund center, but you know, the fund center is, is, a, uh, is a mini golf uh, little course, okay. Uh, well, it's going to involve an arcade. Okay. Well, it's going to involve a, a, a beer and wine garden. Well, that may not be okay. Uh, it's going to involve uh, horse horse rides. Uh, that may not be a permitted use. So I think your application needs to clearly define exactly what you want to do on the property, each and every aspect of your intended use. But then we have to tell them yes or no. Right, or at least once it's submitted, when would that be discussed in, C, in the next CDRC meeting if at all of that's submitted? And then from there, they can make a basis of what they want to do. That's one way of doing it. Uh, again, I'm, number one, I'm not willing to spend my clients' uh, money foolishly, except on me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're not looking to waste uh, your time. Um, <laughs> at his expense, because I know you're, you know, you have a consultant fee, uh, pass through. So I, I, what I, what I don't know is because I think the narrative is sufficiently detailed to tell you and the plan, uh, to tell you what the uses are. Now, if you ultimately were to say, well, that use, that use could be permitted, or you know, the planning board could, have, could approve that, but it's not likely in that area of the site, that's fine. Uh, we'll make that determination and we'll process the application and you'll comment on the planning board, you know, if, it has to, if something has to be moved, adjusted, that works. But, um, you know, He's got, you know, sufficient detail in his narrative about the uses for you to say, you know, that's permitted. It may not be permitted by the planning board as laid out, but it's a permitted use. You know, um, you know, John, you made the, the copy, the, the comment, I think it was you, about, you know, maybe this requires an area variance, maybe it requires a use variance. Okay. There's a big, big, big difference there. Yes. Um, and so, um, and the use variance is triggered by the use, not by its location on site or by its compliance, you know, with other bulk regulations. So he can go out and he can spend another 50,000 or more in preliminary engineering um, and then be told, yeah, but you know, our view is this use isn't permitted. I'd like to know your uh, thoughts on that um, collectively. And when I said, you know, I don't expect that now, you know, and Dan, you said it sounds like it's building inspector determination. Well, it isn't, it isn't. I mean, you guys work collaboratively and there's nothing wrong with that. I, but it's a big, big uh, financial decision for my client um, because I think, uh, you know, lot and bulk uh, regulations, uh, you know, can be addressed. It's, you know, worth the, uh, the investment. The use determination, I may tell him something else. And he may decide something else. So, Can you not Ooh. tell us your preliminary, yeah. your views 
I mean, I'm they understanding live. Somebody... Can I interject for a second? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, can I interject for just a second? The, yeah, the please. Use issue, one of the use issues, there's a lot of voids in your narrative that have that raised a little bit of a question. Okay. Um, like, I didn't realize until I read through the narrative that it's going to be open until 1 a.m. Okay. Okay, so that's that, that definitely swings things more towards an adult adult trend. The hours of the beer and wine garden don't are not mentioned at all. And is it going to be open 12 months out of the year? Which means in the wintertime, is it going to be a bar with an arcade? So that's another question. That, tr that changes the use as well. So if it's a bar open till 1 a.m. and it has an arcade attached, it's no longer a, a, a kid's park. It's an actual bar with an arcade attached. Lou, can I just, uh, just for clarification, is the use under the code a kid's? Hold on, I'm, I'm going to pull no, it out. No, no, it's a recreation center, but yeah. The, but if it, if you have a bar basically on site, it's yeah. not part of a recreation center anymore because the recreation center is you can't play mini golf in the dead of winter. You're not using the bumper boats in the dead of winter. You're not riding the horses in the dead of winter, and the go kart track is probably not operational in the dead of winter, but the bar is. Okay. So that use is now a bar and an arcade. Okay. And is a bar arcade or is an arcade a separately? Neither of them are listed in our in an LO zone. A restaurant okay. bar or not listed in in the LO zone as a as an approved use or even as a use so with a that bar. which is not permitted is prohibited. There you go. Maybe. I mean, it, I mean that's the type of comment, Dan. That's that's helpful. I'm not saying I agree. But it's helpful. But Why wouldn't you agree? <laughs> because there are any number of uses that the courts have said, uh, though not permitted, uh, are not prohibited. Uh, Clear power plant? Well, we haven't put that on there yet. <laughs> OK, um, can you make it hard to get land? <laughs> no, but, uh, but um, OK, so, so that's, I mean, that's. That's helpful. Um, that's helpful. So but how about so so the there are issues regarding uh, you know alcohol service um, and hours. I, I I disagree that <laughs> unfortunately with our climate in the last decade. Um, I know in Orangetown, uh, the golf course is open a minimum of the golf course 10 months uh, out of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes 10 and a half to 11. Um, and I know the, the mini golf uh, down. Yeah, but, it's, but isn't that a municipal golf course? Yeah. And does a municipality have to comply with its own zoning if it um, the gen uh, Dan, I'm not. I don't want to argue over that because no, I think not, gener it, no. I think I don't know how good of a. I, what I'm saying is, I don't think that's a an, a, a good uh, um, example. Well, um, it's a good example for the reason I was I was using it, and that is that um, you know it's when you talk about mini golf and it's no different than, than regular golf, although regular golf, I think, would operate less uh, with a, a I do not season. hit balls into the woods when I play mini golf. I totally disagree with you. They are very different sports, very different. Okay, but you go to the same places I might go to. My point is, you know, I, I was, you know how, you know, what is seasonal, um, you know, uh, I'm saying mini golf can be played 12 months out of the year. Now, so, if the related, so can an ice, so can an ice cream out an outdoor yes, can ice cream parlor. Right. But no one be. does it. <laughs> but no one. Yeah, does they it. do. Downtown New City, there's one. I just drove by it yesterday. The Which Dairy one? Queen and I live uh, there. The Dairy Queen in Montvale, just adjacent to Chestnut Ridge, is open 12 months out of the year. Well, I'm talking about one where people are sitting outside uh, with benches and... Yeah, um, okay. 
okay. uh, you know, Dairy, Dairy Queen, you can go inside. My point would it's be really a restaurant. Okay. My point would be that I imagine the planning board could put reasonable restrictions. It could decide what's a, what's accessory to the principal use, and could impose reasonable restrictions on operation. And we deal with those. That's a far different question from use. Now, if what Lou is suggesting, and I did not think of that, is that the bar, tavern, whatever we call it, in conjunction with an arcade, if separately operable, would be something other than an outdoor recreation facility as used in your code. I understand that, that's helpful. Um, and then we have to look at that and decide you know, how to deal with that. But the generic uses in the context of an outdoor recreation facility, can you not tell us, you know, this isn't, in our view, this isn't permitted. And again, I don't expect you to do that now, um, but I would like to before we, you know, I would like your collective view before we go to the expense of incorporating an element or elements into the plan um, at considerable expense. Now, you can do that. You can also choose not to do that. I prefer that you did. Um, and again, what I know about zoning is that none of you can bind the village by your erroneous determination. So if you tell me collectively, we think this or we think that regarding a use, I understand that we can't take that to the bank. I understand that. But at least it provides us with uh, the same guidance that you know you, we're likely to see uh, at the planning board and by the planning which anybody else withstanding can then challenge. But at least up front, you know, I would hope you're not sitting back saying, you know, you can't do go-karts. You can't do uh, mini golf there. That's a use issue, not a, uh, you know, a, uh, an area issue because we'll adjust the area. I mean, you know, there's enough, I think, flexibility uh, to meet all the requirements, uh, you know, that the planning board uh, is not inclined to wait. Well, the, you can only find that out by going to the planning board. I do have the LO uh, laboratory office bulk requirements section of the village of Aramont. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and in there, it, it lists, you know, a, a bunch of different uses that are permitted. I'm sure you've seen it. Office buildings, yep. hotels, motels, medical, dental facilities, outdoor recreational facilities, okay, which is what you, you're proposing to come under. Warehousing, schools, institutions, public utility, storage of buildings, et cetera. So childcare even. Um, so I, I'm not seeing an area that says, you know, eating and drinking establishments, which is typical of a, of a, of a beer garden. So to, to, to not to put a further twist into it, but um, if it's my understanding that the zoning board of appeals may be required to give a zoning interpretation as to whether or not these uses that you are looking to do are permitted or whether or not they require a variance. I don't know if it's the planning board or the CDRC that has the authority to 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 give those determinations. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think you have the authority. So no, that's that's understood. But uh, you know, again, the you know the beer garden, um, I think would clearly be, and we would make it such to the extent there was some ambiguity and accessory use. Um, I mean, uh, certainly, you know, food service, 
um, and the like, uh, you know, as part of any entertainment establishment is, I mean, it's however you define accessory use, a use subordinate to the principal use. I mean, you know, I, I think there are, con there are conditions that you could reasonably impose and there are, uh, you know, I, I understand that, that concern. Um, but, you know, if what you're saying is irrespective of the uh, of any conditions, it is a principal use not permitted in the zone. Okay, we then have to take that under advisement. Um, yes, I'm, I'm not really saying it is or it isn't. I'm saying that it may not be the CDRC or the planning board's decision. Okay, it may be another agency's decision, i.e. the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's that's all I'm saying. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's Lou first. And then if you disagree with them, it's uh, an application to the Zoning Board challenging the building inspector's determination. Okay. Okay. Planning board doesn't have the authority. It's not a quasi judicial board. It doesn't have the authority to supersede a determination of the building inspector. The zoning board does. Correct. Oh, I understand that. But, you know, so if Lou says it is, you know, um, if Lou says it is, you're done. Well, okay then. In other words, just to be clear, if Lou says it's allowed. Yes. No. Well, okay. of course, okay. that doesn't prevent a uh, interested party from challenging that. But right. as far as the village is concerned, um, okay. process-wise, that's the way it would work. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll revise our plans and we'll be back to you. Okay. Good. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you everyone. Right. And John, if you have ever have any questions, call me. I will, Dan. Okay. Everybody stay safe. You too. You thank too. you. Thank you. Take care.